Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. Let's begin today by getting a measure within yourself about what you think about who you are and what you bring to a relationship equation. Are you a decent person? You know, when you come to a relationship, it's like, well, I have plenty to offer here. Are you likable? Do you like to be supportive and and an encourager? Do you have good coping skills? Would you say that your values and preferences and priorities are good for the future of any relationship that you might engage with? Now, I'm hoping that the answer to questions like that would be, well, sure, I bring good good stuff to the equation. I'm a reasonable and adequate kind of person. The narcissist doesn't want you to think that way. And it's kind of sad to think, well, not kind, it's tragic to think that when you feel good about who you are, then they somehow feel threatened by that. And as a result, what they want to do is they want to destroy any kind of confidence you have so that they can elevate themselves. And I want you to understand that the number one reason that you wind up becoming trapped and snared by the narcissist is your self-doubt. Narcissists want you to live not in confidence, but they want you to live with doubt. You see, there, there are two categories of people that they tend to be drawn toward. Uh, one is flying monkeys. They like to bring people into their sphere of influence who will say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And they become apologists on behalf of the, the narcissist. They like that a lot. But then the second category is, well, if you're not going to be my flying monkey, I at least want you to be somebody who knows their place. And they want to, uh, they want to be in the dominant position and for you to be in the subordinate position. They want you to be weak. And when you look at it that way, it's, it's pitiable that they would think that way because ideally relationships are, you know, an interdependent. You scratch my back. I scratch your back. Let's make each other's life uh, pleasant because of our presence with one another. They don't think like that. Narcissists instead, because of their need for control and their need for superiority, they're highly critical. We have a word for that. It's called gaslighting. In their criticism, they want you to have all sorts of doubts about who they are, or excuse me, about who you are. How commonly has that narcissist come toward you with statements of invalidation? And I know that with many of you, the answer is way too many times to count. Or how many times have you been told you don't know what you're talking about? Or how many times have you found yourself uh, needing to argue over trivia, or it may actually be a big decision and you just feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall? How often has that person laughed at you or mocked you or scolded you? How many times have you been exposed to their contempt and their harsh anger, even to the point of rage? All of that is part of their effort to keep you in the down position. They want you to stay in that position of doubt. And when you buy into self-doubt, then you're in their trap and they, quote, win. Now, it's essential for you to understand there's a reason that narcissists do this with you. And that's plain and simple. They want supply from you, narcissistic supply. And by that, I mean they want to keep you in a, in a down position so they can elevate themselves at, at your expense. And then every time you go into the argumentative mode or every time you defend yourself or whenever you just completely collapse emotionally, they're thinking, I win and you're inside their cage. Your confidence goes to a low place. Your doubt goes to a high place. Now, I want you to, to listen for things inside your own head that will give you some clues that you, in fact, are uh, are playing into their game and you're uh, way too caught up in this self-doubt kind of mindset. I, I'm going to run through several things that might uh, be there, and I want you to think, okay, do I find myself thinking this way, which implies I've got some room to uh, to adjust and grow. For example, how many times have you said to yourself, I, I can't let this person 
uh, say inaccurate things about me. <laughs> and you, you know that much of what they say is, is wrong, but you find yourself thinking, I, I won't rest until they quit doing that. You're inside your, their trap when you go into that kind of space. Or how many times have you thought, I'm not going to tolerate this. Okay, I can appreciate that. But then you go on the offense, and then when they don't respond very well, you just keep coming at them with the offense, and you wind up becoming belligerent. And I've had so many of you ask, well, does that mean that I've turned into a narcissist myself? And I, I don't think we're going to need to go quite that far, but what we are going to say is that implies that they're setting your pace and you find yourself playing the games that they originate. Is that what you want to do? But that's part of your self-doubt. Or it could be that you think within yourself, well, if I can just be allowed to explain myself. And so you go into an, an over-justifying uh, kind of uh, way of communicating with that person. Or you may think within yourself, I cannot rest until that narcissist admits how inappropriate they are. And so you try to you know, play the role of the prosecuting attorney. Of course, I'm going to guess that it hadn't worked yet. And this next time that you do it is not going to be the time that that's going to happen. It could be that you start thinking, well, maybe there's some truth to the accusations that the narcissist brings toward me. Maybe I don't do everything right. And they can point out some errors and it's like, well, they got me on that one. And so deep down, you can start asking within your, within your own mind, well, am I really that decent person that I say they, that I am? Uh, it could be that, uh, I'm just kidding myself. Other folks seem not to, to, to notice as much as I wish. So are they right? And then it might be that you'll start questioning, well, what if the narcissist does a really good job in the PR department? And many of them are good at this. And so they get other people to align with them. Are other people going to believe the narcissist over me? What does that mean? Am, am I the only one who sees what's going on or am I just distorted and perhaps I'm the troubled one here? Narcissists love it when you think like that. And then you start scolding your own self when you're in this doubting kind of mode. I can't believe that I got myself hooked up in a situation like this. Uh, was I too optimistic in the beginning or did I just ignore the red flags and so you begin beating yourself up for things like that? Or you might want to say to your thing, you try to rationalize yourself, well, wait a minute, I've done a lot of nice things. After all the good that I've done, and this is a, as, as good of a review that I'm going to get, and so you go into that kind of space, and then you just uh, heave a deep sigh and you say, this is just way too much for me to handle. Anytime you have those kinds of thoughts roaming around in your mind and it just stays there kind of almost in an obsessive kind of way, the self-doubt is fully intact and you remain inside the narcissist trap. Now, let's keep in mind that uh, when you go into this kind of space, you're entering into the narcissist game. And their, the name of their game is Let's Judge You. And every time you say, quit it or stop, or this isn't fair, uh, and you push back, it's like, I don't care how you play the game. I'm just glad you're playing the game. And they've got you going. They're inside your head. It's like they've taken up residence in there and, uh, and, and you're ensnared by all of that. You can work so hard in pushing against the narcissist inaccuracies that you lose sight of your own internal resolve, your own internal confidence, and you lose sight over your initiatives. So let's pull back. And I, I have some questions that I want you to ponder. Do you really have to have the narcissist endorsement? And I know that if this is someone that you live with or is in your extended family or you work with or you have to engage with them in organizations, it'd be nice if they could say, yeah, you're a reasonable person. But do you have to have that person's endorsement to be okay? Uh, another question is, clearly, this is a very imbalanced individual. Is it your job to make that person have insight? It would certainly be nice if they could come toward you with insight and say, Hey, wait a minute. You know, I can look at you all day long, but I've got it. I've got some self examination I need to do. You're not going to hear that, but is it your job to make that happen? I don't think so. Or another question I'd like for you to ask yourself is, 
if other people seem to align with the narcissist against me, what are my options? You have plenty of options. One is you can be shocked, like I can't believe this is happening, when in fact, a narcissist can be very good at their sales position, if you will, selling themselves and denigrating you in the process. Uh, another option is you can just think, okay, I'll just buy into the role. I'll go along to get along and I won't make waves. And I know a lot of people who have done that. Sometimes you get to the point of thinking, well, if I can convince enough other people about uh, the fact that I'm a nice person and the narcissist is difficult, maybe that's okay. Uh, or sometimes you just break down and cry. You, you have options. But then the question is, what if you decided to just stop pushing back? What if you decided that, you know, I'm just going to have some loose endedness here and there are going to be some things that the narcissist and their flying monkeys and people they have in their sphere of influence, there are going to be some things that I'm not going to be able to tie down and I may have to live with a certain amount of loose endedness. Uh, when, when you have this situation where the narcissist wants to perpetuate your sense of doubt in yourself, I'm hoping you can respond by saying, I'm going to go into assertiveness. Yes. I'm going to go with my boundaries, which means I'm going to establish who I am and I'm going to stick with it. Yes. And then when it, you get to the, uh, the point where you can say, and I'm going to convince that narcissist. No, I don't have to convince that narcissist of anything. The, the real question that I'm hoping you can ask is, what do I believe about myself? So I go back to those early questions that I asked at the top of the video. Are you decent? Are you likable? Do you have good values and standards and principles? The narcissist wants you to doubt all of that. Uh, they want you to feel as if you're permanently trapped inside their dysfunction. But let's keep in mind, that person is the one who's establishing the dysfunction. You can say to that narcissist, at least in your mind, you know, it's like you're occupying space inside my head and then asking me to pay rent. That makes no sense. I'm not going to do it. I'm sticking with my belief in who I am and all that goes with it. I'm hoping that can be your ultimate response. Now, I hope that videos such as this can give you some good awareness about what you're dealing with. It's so uh, tempting at times to say, well, I've got to get that other person to change, when in fact, one of the things I'm hoping that we can accomplish with the education that we have here on the channel is for, that for you to say, well, the one person I can work with is myself, and, and that's what I'm trying to go with here. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, I would encourage you to do so. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, and we'll keep more videos and on a cumulative basis. I hope it gives you a, a sense of strength from the inside out. If you have a need for therapy, and I know many times when you're dealing with this, that would be very beneficial. You know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at betterhelp.com. It's an online therapy resource. It's affordable. It's accessible. We found that it can be very effective in the way that uh, you engage with a therapist. And so if that's a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to go into that. We have a link below that will take you to their link. You get a 10% discount on the first month. So go into that space if that's your need. Likewise, I have my therapeutic courses, and these are like signing up for an online class. Each course has at least 25 videos with, uh, with uh, uh, written documentation per video, lots of guided questions uh, to take you in a certain direction. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills. This is me about establishing those boundaries, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We also have multiple webinars now, and we're building up our library there, and it's on our website. They're very popular. Uh, we have my podcast. We have lots of articles on the website, my books, plenty of resources. I, I know that the narcissist loves to invalidate you because they, they are energized when you have self-doubt. That's the number one reason that you stay caught. But I'm hoping you can say, you know, I know enough about myself to know that I'm a, a work in progress. I'm not perfect, but I'm certainly moving in the right direction. Mr. and Mrs. Narcissist, I'm not going to hand, uh, hand the, the keys over to, uh, to you on that category. I'm going to be true to myself because in the end, I'm hoping it illustrates that you are committed to becoming the person of peace that the narcissist just simply is not going to be.